praise. Y'all sing with us as we start the show off tonight. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, sing with us. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. To have them. But I heard on a, a Gaither video once that um, someone asked Bill Gaither, they said, why do you sing the old songs? You know, or why can't you do new stuff? And he said, I'm not singing songs because they're old. I'm singing songs because they're good. And they've stood the test of time. And I know a lot of history about this family that's coming up to sing. I was fortunate to start my career at the Southern Gospel Music Hall of Fame. And uh, this family was instrumental in making that happen and bringing that to our area. So I'm excited. They have a show here. We're going to give away tickets to a bunch of people tonight. Make them welcome as they're coming to sing for us the Blackwood. Thank you, JP. I don't know just what I'd do if the Lord was walking by my side. Well, I was drifting, I was drifting on the sea of despair. And I was wondering, I was wondering in the soul world of care. When Jesus, when found, Jesus me found me in my sinful life. Heard me praying, he heard me praying on my knees at night. Well, now I'm now I'm singing out a brand new song. I'm so happy. I'll be happy as I go along. I don't know. I don't know just, just what I'd do if the Lord wasn't walking by my side. What would I do? What would I do when the tears fill my eyes? What would I do? What would I do when it's my time to die? I'd be lonely, discouraged, burning all the way. Well, if the Lord wasn't walking by my side every day, I'd be friendless. I'd be friendless all alone and blue. I'd be so helpless. I'd be helpless, wouldn't know what to do. I don't know. I don't know just, just what I'd do if the Lord wasn't walking by my side. Sing it, boys! What would I do? What would I do when the truth filled my eyes? What would I do? What would I do when it's my time to die? I'd be lonely. Curry, bird, and all the way. Well, if the Lord wasn't walking by my side every day, I'd be friendless. I'd be friendless all alone in blue. I'd be so helpless. I'd be helpless. Now. Wouldn't know what to do. I don't know. I don't know just, just what I'd do if the Lord wasn't walking by my side every day. If the Lord wasn't walking by my wasn't side. By my side. Uh-huh. Well, how many Stephen find this afternoon? Well, here's the Blackwood singer still feeling fine, right? Still feeling fine after all this time. I'm feeling mighty fine today. Every day I'm climbing just a little bit higher, walking up the King's Highway. I still want to go where the milk and honey flow, and I'm not going to change my mind. I'm happy on my journey, and I'm still feeling mighty fine. Oh, Tana! Well, I'm waking in the morning, thinking about the journey, going to the promised land. Thinking about the songs that we used to sing, and then sing them all over again. God has never changed and the songs remain. Heaven's still on my mind. I know where I'm going and I'm still feeling mighty fine. Well, I'm still feeling fine after all this time. I'm feeling mighty fine today. 
Every day I'm climbing just a little bit higher Walking up the King's Highway I still want to go where the milk and honey flow And I'm not going to change my mind Happy on the journey and I'm still feeling mighty fine I'm still feeling fine after all this time I'm feeling mighty fine today Every day I'm climbing just a little bit higher Walking up the King's Highway I'm still going to go where the milk and honey flow And I'm not going to change my mind Happy on my journey and still feeling mighty fine Oh, I still want to go where the milk and honey flow And I'm not going to change my mind Happy on my journey and still feeling mighty fine Still feeling About that that was cool wasn't it even if you weren't feeling fine you still could grab some of those mics guys so we can talk for a few minutes RW if you don't mind uh, tell me uh, introduce the group to everyone all right uh, JP it's a joy to be here this is 50 years for me 50 years ago I got started in this how about that yeah uh, this a lot of gray lady. hair on his head oh well, thanks to my wife right here <laughs> Or thanks, hers either. Thanks to Donna in Walmart, Amen. I don't have any gray I hair, right? I understand. But uh, I met Donna. Hang on a minute, JP. We've seen you through a few colors, too. You, you sure have. <laughs> you sure have. So let, let's move on past that. Yeah, let's All right. right. <laughs> Donna and I uh, met in Houston, Texas at the Music Hall in 1964. Okay. And we got married in 1965. We're getting ready. Well, we're we working sell. towards 50 years, folks. We just sell 50 like years. Okay. 49, okay. All right, and Donna comes from Texas. My lovely wife, Donna Blackwood, she's an original Blackwood singer. Yep. And then over here, the other girl, this beautiful blonde, Tana, first joined our group in 1975. That's when I was born, Tana. <laughs> <laughs> Tana uh, came out mom. of Lee University, yeah, the, the joined the Blackwood God, Singers, sure. moved Absolutely. to Nashville, joined our group, and then she became uh, vice president of Gospel Music Association yes. there in Nashville. And she's back in Pigeon Forge with the yeah. Blackwood Singers. And Tana was, so, and, and folks may not realize, but she was, a, she was a mover and shaker in the industry, you know, of Southern, she, she booked some heavy talent, and she, and she really pioneered, you know, I met her from Lou Hildreth, yeah. and, and Tana was in her day, I mean, you had to, you had to forge ahead because you were in a territory that was primarily men. men. Yeah. It was all so that, men. That was, that was a little... Ch tell me some of the couple things. You, you booked for who and you did some stuff? Oh, gosh, well, before that, I actually started in radio promotion. Okay. And that's when it was all men. All I was men. the first female radio promoter. Yeah, that's so, interesting. Um, but ended up having great friends through yeah. that and then um, ended up booking groups. Yeah. So I've kind of done a little bit of everything throughout the industry. It's just been a great journey for me. The funnest is singing though, probably? Yeah. yeah. You know what? Being back with these guys, I bet. it's we are having a blast. I know you are. We I really can tell are. You are. Okay, I'm sorry. Keep going, R R W. All right, Tan and I got back together. That's what we've been together now. Thirty nine years, right? <laughs> My entire life. I tell you what, we got some great talent and uh, this bass singer I, I told him one day backstage that I wanted to grow up and be a cowboy because we worked with Roy Rogers and Dale Evans. Sure. We were their backup group. And I always wanted to be like Roy Rogers. He's looked at me and he said, well, R.W., I always wanted to grow up and be an Indian. Well, he made it, folks. He's from Teleco Plains, Tennessee. He is a Cherokee Indian. Yeah. Brad Smith. All right. It? Fabulous bass singer. Woo! He is. And uh, singing the first tenor, this guy comes from Ohio. He comes from a very large capital city of Ohio, Archibald, Ohio, population 247. <laughs> Jonathan Lee Kunkel, ladies and gentlemen, on first tenor. He's the finest you're going to hear anywhere at any time. Our newest member is Brian. Brian, step down here. Brian is no stranger to this no, area. Absolutely. Tell them where you worked for 16 years. <laughs> right. Smoky Mountain Jubilee. Anybody remember that show yes. locally? All right. And then we took moved. the name and added gospel. Sorry. That's right. He also uh, worked out at Dollywood. And yeah. what was the name of that group? Country Crossroads. And what's the name of the group you're with now? Uh, oh, Blackwood. 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 That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Brian Norris, ladies and gentlemen, plays the keyboard, sings the baritone. Folks, the Blackwoods. Uh, 
think we're back. Hey, we're back. We didn't even know it. Talking folks to the Blackwoods here on the Smoky Mountain Gospel Jubilee. If you're just tuning in, we're having a great time at the Ogle Furniture Outlet on Dolly Parton Parkway in Sevierville. I'm the host, J.P. Miller, and every Monday night we do this, and it's a lot of fun. We, we're in a furniture store. We all get together, a whole bunch of folks. We're the place to be on each Monday night. Tonight, um, uh, the Blackwoods are here with us, as well as Tommy Spencer. So when folks are coming in, you have folks visiting, this is a free show. We invite you to come over and join us on Monday night. I was telling the Blackwoods as we were at commercial break, I said, boy, the song Feeling Fine, um, uh, it sounded great. It sounds so full. And, you know, to be able to still sound that good after 50 years is, is an accomplishment. <laughs> but I do know that uh, through their whole career and even through recently, those words, feeling fine, have not always been true. And I wanted to share, Donna, you know, we've talked before. Mm -hmm. I said we've done the interview on television and radio yeah. probably 10 different times. But this is something that I think that our audience that's listening out there or those here, they want to hear, hear, hear your story. Okay. In January of 2012, I was diagnosed with cancer. And... Uh, in March of 2012, we began our ninth season with Fee Hedrick Family Entertainment. In March of 2012, I had my 65th birthday in March of 2012. The day before that birthday, I began treatments of chemo and radiation in Knoxville at UT Medical Center. So every day, as soon as the show was over, RW would take me to UT and I would receive those treatments. Your show's in the morning. It is in the morning at 10 a.m. every morning, yeah. So, uh, you know, I know there are a lot of people who have dealt with cancer in sure. their own lives, probably even here tonight or in the lives of a loved one. So you understand it's very difficult, and it, it wasn't any different for us. I would go in, and um, most of the time I could make it through, you know, the entire show barely. Um, there were days that I might make half a show, and then there were a lot of days I made one song and finally came to the point where I couldn't go in anymore. But let me tell you what I did. When I first found out I had cancer and the type of cancer I had and the prognosis that the doctor had given us, which was not good, I went home and I sat down and I wrote down every healing scripture I could. And I typed it out and made copies. And if you walked in my house, there were scriptures all over the house, taped everywhere. Because I knew I was going to have to stand on the Word of God during this time. That was my only hope. And then uh, three days into treatment, I lost every bit of my hair. And two months into radiation, I had third-degree burns from the radiation where... My skin was burnt from the inside out, and it was charred on the outside. It was black, and anything that touched it, it would literally, it would peel off in, in layers, not just one layer, but, you know, several layers, and it would leave red running blisters. And, and I was in so much pain, and I was in there in the doctor's, at, at the hospital getting a radiation treatment about the 22nd treatment. And the doctor came in that day, and he said, Donnie, he said, we need to talk. He said, first of all, I'm going to give you two weeks off. Hopefully your skin will regenerate. But secondly, I need to tell you that this is in God's hands at this point. He said, um, to be quite honest, that's the only thing we can do right now. I was so weak, R.W. got me home, got me into the house, got into the bedroom when I got in there. I literally started screaming every scripture that was posted around my house. And I said, God, you promised me in your word that every plant, every tumor that you did not plant would be rooted out. And I would just repeat these different scriptures I had been doing. You see, every time I would take a medication, a pill at home, I would repeat that entire list of scriptures because that was my prescription that 